There is no place for arguments as you are God all by yourself. Oh, you got time and seasons in your head. There is no place for arguments. Oh, you are God all by yourself. Yes, you are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for arguments. Oh, you are God all by yourself. Oh, you got time and seasons in your hands. There is no place for arguments. You are God all by yourself. Sing, you are God. Yeah, you are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. Oh, you are God all by yourself. Yes, you are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. God bless you. God bless you. Be with us around the world this morning. I am woman of God, Marilyn Doka, based in Massachusetts. And I give God the glory for you this morning. I give God the glory to be seen by the wonders of God around the world. I give God the glory to be cited by the wonders of God around the globe today. It is a privilege to be in your presence this morning at this hour. I magnify the name of the Lord that we all know. Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Makadasha. I gave him the glory this morning that... I can come and I meet you here, hallelujah. Chosen generations, may God bless you. Children of God, may God increase you. Okay, I want us to turn quickly to the book of um, Thessalonians, uh, Thessalonians 5, 17. And you don't have to worry. It's not the time when I tell you, take your plug and plug it in, take your phone and charge it because the scripture is very short. The scripture says, pray without ceasing. That's it. You don't have to worry about anything else attached to that. You don't have to worry about anything else attached to that. Hallelujah. You can just see that the scripture said, pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. This morning, the scripture said, pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. So that's all you have to do. You are praying without ceasing. And that is it. That's the book you have to look at. So sit back, get your drinks, relax. And let us dive into this message together. We just read the book of Thessalonians 5.17. And what did it indicate? It indicated pray without ceasing. So believers, with that being said, let us just pray. Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Makadash, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Yahweh this morning. We bless your name this night. We exalt your name this hour. We give you the glory at this time. Take your glory for it all belongs to you. You alone are worthy to be praised and adored. Thank you, Jesus. Let your words sink into somebody and let them be excited that we talked about you today in Jesus' name. So may God bless you, believers. Hallelujah. So the message uh, that I prepare for you today, the theme is spiritual atmosphere. Spiritual atmosphere, hallelujah. Let me just as, uh, reiterate that. Let me restate that. The message for you today, the theme for you today is titled, is theme, spiritual atmosphere. Hallelujah. So like I said, greetings to the believers around the world this morning. Hallelujah. It is my pleasure to be cited by you all this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a pleasure knowing that wonderful people of God, beautiful people of God are looking at me this morning. So I give God the glory for you. Okay. Okay. All right. 
So we have prayed, we have welcomed God, and we are asking him to take charge that we may step aside that he may appear, hallelujah. May he step aside that, 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 that we, that, that, I mean, may we step aside, hallelujah, God forbid, that we have to, that he has to step aside for us to appear, God of mercy. That we, may, may, may we step aside that he appear, that he take his glory, for it all belongs to him, hallelujah, this morning. So today, I gave you the scripture, Thessalonians 5, verse 17, which the Bible indicated that, we shall pray without ceasing, hallelujah. So with that, with that message, with that scripture, I gave you a birth, I gave birth to the title, the theme that I titled Spiritual Atmosphere this morning. So believers, I just want us to take this time and talk about things that are essential to our life and, and, and it, how essential they are. If they are not well taken care of, we could be in, we could be in for some trouble. Things that are, that, that are essential to the existence of human human uh, um, human existence. Things that are things that are essential to us as human in our existence. And if care is not taken, if they are not well taken care of, or if they are not well handled, we could ha we could be ending up for trouble. Hallelujah! We will be ending up for trouble. Hallelujah! I give God the glory this morning that I came and I met you. So. Things that are essential to the believer's life, things that are essential to us, our human nature. Number one, food. If you haven't gotten your pen, please get your pen. Food. Number two, water. These are things that I draw down for you. Uh, number three, um, hygiene. These are the three things I, from my perspective, are essential to the human mind, to the human existence, to, the, to what makes human beings who they are. I love food, I'm sorry to say. It's not, I, I shouldn't be ashamed of it because food is good, it tastes good. And I know many of you, you guys love food. How many of you love you guys some, uh, um, if you're from the Ivory Coast, some acheke and some fried fish? You love it. That is that is the, the, the avoiding food and it's so beautiful, it tastes so good. And, 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 and yeah, if from morning to, to night, if we don't eat that, something happened. So as, as children of God, as human beings, I should say, if we, we don't eat food, something happens. So we are going to be going into science class for a little bit. Hallelujah, before I can open up your mind. But I gave you the thing, I said spiritual atmosphere. Now, some of you might be asking, I know what I know what spiritual is, but what is atmosphere? Atmosphere is the surroundings that you find yourself. They, like sometimes you can say, oh, the, the atmosphere is really polluted today. It's a scientific uh, statement, scientific word. You know, the gases in, in our surroundings is not healthy today. The atmosphere is very cold today. My surroundings is very cold today. So spiritual atmosphere is what? The life of a Christian that we are about to dive into. So like I said, three things that are essential to the human existence. Number one, food. Number two, water. Number three, hygiene. So now, I jotted down some notes for you. Food, get your pen, okay? According to research, when someone does not eat first, their blood, their blood sugar drops. If someone doesn't eat, their blood sugar drops and they can't think straight. They can't do anything straight. How many of you have been in that state before? My God, you are so hungry that if anybody talks to you, you get upset. If anybody even say hello, it's like they're telling you, say, I'm about to punch your face. You get so mad as if the person came to do something wrong to you. How many of you have been have been into that state? So that's why I say we are entering into science class this morning. So get your pen on this hour. Get your pen. According to research, scientifically, if a human being does not eat their blood sugar drops, and they cannot think straightly. Their mind is, something is going on there. Hallelujah. They cannot think strictly. Study shows that the brain takes glucose to, to be, takes in glucose to be able to efficiently work. So therefore, if your body does not have enough glucose, the, 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 the brain cannot function as it's, as it's supposed to be 100%. Hallelujah. If, 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 if care is not taken. So study shows that the brain Intakes glucose to be able to efficiently, effectively works. 
So therefore, if enough glucose is not within the brain, hallelujah, it cannot function as it is, or it cannot function at its hundred percent. So that is why when you are hungry, if somebody talk to you, even if the person have done nothing, they just need to say hello, to get mad. Don't talk to me. I'm not here for that. Don't talk to me today. Sometimes you're in a house with your children or your husband, your wife, and, and they just say, um, honey, I hope you, please, please don't talk to me, please. That's why, what happened, Abby? That means in our human body, something scientific is going on there. So most of us, we don't know, we just be, we can just sum it up and say, well, I'm hungry, I don't like nobody to talk to me. It's not because you don't like nobody to talk to you. It's because there is, you are in a scientific state or there's also some kind of a health issues that is going on that, that you cannot explain. So don't say, when I'm, don't, when I'm hungry, I don't like people to talk to me, no. It's because you can't think straight. You not to yourself. You can't think straight. So that is why when somebody, when you're so hungry, when somebody talk to you, you push them away, or you you say something to them, or you you you, you know until you drink some kind of a nice apple juice, or you drink some kind of a nice orange juice and eat a little bit of biscuits, then you come to yourself. You start smiling everywhere. That's because why the the the, the glucose has entered the body. So that's why I'm saying there are some things that are essential to the human existence. If they are not taking care of some things will go wrong. Sometimes when people are hungry and they don't have money and they're so hungry, they go and they steal because they need to quench that, um, that satisfaction in them that needs to have an intake of food. Sometimes people go steal food. It doesn't mean they are rogues, but because they, 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 they need the intake of the food. That is why they go there and they, and they steal to eat. Because research just showed to us that what? The body cannot function well at its 100% without glucose in the brain. So glucose needs to enter in the brain for it to be able to um, um, effectively, efficiently work at its 100%. That is number one, that is food. And number two, we look at water, W-A-T-E-R. If you don't drink enough water, your feces get high and you experience constipation. And constipation does not come with normal life. Abdominal pain, you start to suffer from, from, from dehydration. And people will even sometimes see this on your face. And maybe I'm using some big words for you because I told you we are coming to some science class before, we, we, before I sum it up with our, with, with, with our message that I brought you. Okay, so you say, but what is dehydration? What is this word of God coming here? What is she talking about today? She talked about science class and, and we are here now. We talked about glucose and, and now we are talking about dehydration. And you know, so dehydration, the word dehydration, take it and write it down. It is spelled as it is spelled as D-H-Y, D-H-Y-D-R-A-T-I-O-N. Dehydration. So when, we, when the human body, you don't drink enough water, you don't have enough water in your system, you begin to experience some dryness in your skin, dryness in your physical appearance, and then you begin to have some abdominal pain. What, you, what, what is she calling abdominal? Abdomen is the bottom part of the belly. Here, yeah. you begin to start having some pain in your stomach, and you say, ouch, that is hurting me. And next thing you know, you need to use the bathroom. But when you go to use the bathroom, what happens there? The feces become very hard, and they can't come out because why? You didn't have enough water in your system. And that state of, of, of mind or that state of health, where you don't have enough water in your body, science call that state um, dehydration. They call that that health state dehydration. Your eyes are really pure and you look pale in a body. You don't have enough water in your body. You can fall. You can fall down at any time. That is what it's what what what, what, science, what scientists are calling dehydration. And sometimes what dehydration does to us, it makes us to feel uncomfortable. One of the most dangerous health conditions that come along with the dehydration is what? Constipation. And it's not funny. How many of you have experienced constipation before? I mean, we are not here to talk about that, but I said we're going to dive into science a little bit. You know, constipation is so uncomfortable. You want to go to the bathroom, you're in a bathroom for, sometimes you're in a bathroom for 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 30, 20 minutes, but you, you, can't, you can't seem to release to yourself. 
That is because why you are not drinking enough water. So some of you around the globe, let's crack a little joke. Don't say that somebody has poisoned you or somebody is witching you or somebody has bewitched you. Once you are experiencing dehydration, you went to the bathroom, but your feces are not coming. And you're looking pale and your face looks so dried up. Don't think that somebody has bewitched you. It's just a health condition. It's just a health state that can be solved by you just taking a whole gallon of water and just pouring it in your body. Because people who are dehydrated when they go to the hospital, what happens? The people, um, people in the hospital, put water in them until they can be able to come to a certain state of mind. Hallelujah. So let us talk about this one. Hygiene. Hygiene is the is the third one. Hygiene. Hygiene. You say, what does she mean? Hygiene is um, like taking proper care of yourself. The, the, the taking care of yourself. You have to have. You have to keep good hygiene. Meaning you have to take good care of yourself. So, as as human being, if you don't brush your teeth, if you don't uh, put the hairs on your arm, if you don't wash your face, if you don't um, clean yourself well when you go to the bathroom, um, if you don't take care of your mouth, your teeth, you experience some health problems. Okay, don't get bored. Don't get bored. Like I said, we are in a spiritual atmosphere. Don't get bored. We are talking about some things, essential things to the human life. What, what are things that are essential to our life and how they, does it so, how does it affect our surroundings? Hallelujah. So hygiene. If you don't keep a good hygiene, nobody will want to be around you. If you don't take a shower, you don't take well of your body, your friends wouldn't want to be around you. They will say you have your armpit is smelling. They will tell you that your mouth is smelling. They will say that you're wearing dirty clothes. So it is essential that a Christian take shower properly. It is essential that a Christian wash the hair, wash your ear, clean your ears. Because if you don't clean your ears, you have some disease like getting your ears. Your mouth, if you don't brush your mouth uh, well, you get some diseases that come in your mouth. You get some toothache and all those things. And if you don't clean under your arm, the friends will not be comfortable to be around you. You're smelling and all that. So you need to keep a good hygiene. Make sure your clothes are clean all the time. Your socks are clean all the time. Your shoes are good all the time. Your 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 teeth are brushed all the time. Your hair is made all the time. Your arms are taken care of believers. We need to be healthy. So don't say did she come here to preach today or did she come here to teach health class? Believers need to be healthy because we serve a God that is a healthy God. He's a healthy God. Jesus is a healthy healthy God. Hallelujah. I wrote some things down. And I want to talk about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah this morning. Okay. So that is, all of these things are essential to the human existence, just as the spiritual atmosphere of our life. So our teeth need to be clean. Our eyes need to be taken care of. If too much eyes, we have too much sunlight and fill our eyes. If it's not well taken care of, it doesn't, it's not a good sign for us. Our mouth needs to be clean, our ears need to be clean, our clothes need to be clean at all times so we can be living in a good um, atmosphere, so we can be living in a good, healthy relationship with, with our loved ones, so we don't go to hospital for being dirty. That is something. So as believers today, as believers are the sound of my voice, I came to tell you what is the spiritual atmosphere of a believer? What really is the spiritual atmosphere of the believer? The surroundings of the believer that, that needs to be healthy. What is what, what what is that atmosphere that you as a believer need to be in to be healthy? To be healthy. Hallelujah. Um let us look at uh let us just take this for example. We need to breathe. Right now, if somebody came and put their hands to my mouth for about five minutes, maybe five minutes, even too long, maybe three minutes if I'm not breathing, I get so uncomfortable and I want to fight my way out of that person's hand because I want to breathe. I can't breathe. I want to breathe because I don't want to lose my life. So that is the atmosphere that a Christian needs to be in. Spiritual atmosphere is your prayer life. The prayer life, look at your prayer life as something that you cannot, you cannot survive without because if it's cut short, if it's stopped, if it's paused at any point, you will not be able to make it. 
hallelujah. You will not be able to stand a chance, hallelujah. For Bible said in the book of Ephesians, say, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but we are wrestling against principalities and, and rulers of the world and spiritual weakness in high places. So we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but many are the battles of the believers. So how then can a believer live if she is unhealthy spiritually? How well, how then can a believer live if he is unhealthy spiritually? Spiritually, you need to be healthy. Because if you are not healthy spiritually, you begin to see struggles of life. You begin to receive the attacks of the enemy. Spiritually, if you're not healthy, like I just said to you, if you don't eat well, if you don't eat well, you 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 you, get, you end up with some health problem. If you don't eat well, your 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 glucose are everywhere, and everything you do is not balanced in your life. And you are not comfortable. You are mad all the time. If you don't drink water, you get sick and you are dehydrated and you be hospitalized. If you don't take care of your hygiene, your teeth, your mouth, your arm, your feet, your your your, your nails, your face, your, your clothes that you put on your body, if it is not taken care of, you wouldn't have healthy relationship with friends because they will say you are unclean and you don't, you don't smell good. So believers this morning, you need to be in a spiritual atmosphere at all times. This is the livelihood of a Christian. Hallelujah. This is the livelihood of a Christian. This, the Bible did not indicate that you shall preach without ceasing. The Bible did not indicate that you shall sing without ceasing. The Bible did not indicate that you shall drum without ceasing. You shall eat without ceasing. It didn't indicate that. But it made it clear and said what? It said, you shall pray without ceasing. This is the, the spiritual atmosphere for you. When you as a believer decide to pause to start breathing. Because if you start praying, that means you are stop breathing. So that's why I just say, somebody put their hands in my mouth or somebody put their, their hands on my nose and my mouth and stop me from breathing. I will be so uncomfortable. Tears will start dropping down from my eyes because the person is trying to stop me from breathing. So that is what happened to us believers. When once we put a pause in our spiritual atmosphere, we begin to experience the worst things ever in our life. When you see that you have stopped your prayer life, you you you, you see the battles, the enemy that brings wars, the battles, the the the, 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 the ages of darkness, uh, they, they they start shooting at you, shooting at you, shooting at you. Then you go look, you lost a job. Then you go lost, you 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 lost a child. Then you go look, you lost a marriage. Then you go look, you fail your test. Then you go look, you 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 you, you got arrested by the police. Then when you go and look, you 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 got some kind of a deficiency that is affecting your personal your physical life that's because why you have paused the thing that is supposed to make you to be able to breathe in that atmosphere because we live in a world we live in a spiritual world believe it or not the bible indicates what our spirit is always willing to battle but our human flesh is not because why we are easily carried away it is because we pause our spiritual life, it is because we pause our prayer life, and we use God as some kind of a genie in a bottle that we can only make wishes to him. Father God gave me this, Jehovah bless me with this, Jehovah do this to me. Okay, once that thing comes, we are no longer in relationship with him. We are no longer in that spiritual atmosphere. We are, we are out. We go back into the worldly atmosphere. So as a believer today, as a believer around the globe, you need to exercise, you need to make um, a, a, a practice about how to be in the spiritual atmosphere at all time. How to be in your spiritual atmosphere at all time. How can you exist? How can you exist in this demonic war? How can you exist in this wicked war? How can you exist in this world that is full of trials and tribulations? How? How can one be healthy if they, they don't go to the doctor's appointment and they don't know the signal that's going on with them? They don't know the health issues that they have. How can one be saved? How can one be saved? How can one uh, uh, be, be told how to manage uh, uh, their life if they don't see their doctors often? How? How? How this morning? You need to be in the spiritual atmosphere as a believer. Because it is in that atmosphere that you are, you are, you are, you are victorious. Hallelujah. You, you need to say to yourself that I've been in an atmosphere that is not healthy for my Christian life. I've been in an atmosphere that has added nothing to my Christian life or took any nothing away from my Christian life. 
I mean, took something away from my Christian life. I've been in an atmosphere that I, 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 I am not growing as I'm supposed to grow. So God, please redirect my step to where I need to be to grow the way I want to grow. For my giftings to enhance the way it need to enhance. Sometimes believers, I know as men and women of God, at the sound of my voice, ministry can get tough. Things can get tough in your ministry. You want to give up. You want to even tell your children, you know what, we are done. We're not going to be singing. We're not going to be praying. We're not going to be preaching anymore. Let us just do worldly things. But I came to say to you today that the enemy makes sure to suppress you, to pressure you out of your spiritual atmosphere so that he can regain access to you. But this morning, believers, I want you to put on what? The full armor of God. This is the message that God came. God keeps saying to me this few days, like I haven't been connecting. He said, woman of God, spiritual atmosphere. Spiritual atmosphere. And I'm asking him, Lord, what do you mean by spiritual atmosphere? My spirit has been wondering, what does he mean, spiritual atmosphere? He said, believers around the globe are out of this atmosphere. They are out of this community. So they need to get back in that atmosphere and listen to the scripture that said, we shall pray without ceasing. When a believer pray without ceasing, she wins battles. When a believer pray without ceasing, he wins battles. When a believer pray without ceasing, wonders are happening. Wonders are done. Miracles happen. Things change. But I want to let you know, you are just like that person who decides to not eat, and then their blood sugar, their, their blood sugar has gone to a certain state, and they need glucose in their body, and they begin to act up, they begin to fight with everybody if you don't practice to pray as a believer. You are just like that person who decided to not drink water and, and, and let them just look at themselves and get dry and dry and pale. And now they are having uh, 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 repercussions. They have dehydration. Their body has been drained. There is no water in them. And, and they are having some health issues, having pain in their belly, going to the bathroom. You are just like that person if you have given yourself to the enemy and allow him to pull you out of your spiritual atmosphere. Maybe you didn't know what atmosphere it, it, it was, but you need to put yourself as a believer, as a child of God. Even you don't have to be carrying Bible. You don't have to be carrying Bible. You don't have to be preaching, but you need to put yourself in a spiritual atmosphere. Surround yourself. Surround yourself. Hallelujah this morning. Surround yourself. Surround yourself. If the spiritual atmosphere of our life is not taken care of, we run into many dangers in our lives. So that atmosphere of our life needs to be taken care of. Hallelujah. The Bible said, according to the book of Mark 14, verse 38, Wash and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Hallelujah. It is essential that we as believers pray at every given opportunity because we live in a very wicked and unpredictable world. Hallelujah. If we don't cover ourselves, we open up ourselves to evil manipulators. We open up ourselves to evil evaders. If we don't cover ourselves, the coverage you need as a believer is prayer. The coverage you need as a believer is believing in the word of God and growing in his, in his words. It's prayer. Okay? Hallelujah. If we don't cover ourselves, we open ourselves up to evil invaders that will operate against us in the night, in their time of the, their time that they have their meetings. Hallelujah. And I want to make you to remember the devil only what came out to keep to steal, kill, and destroy. So he looks for when we are vulnerable to come and step in and say, I'm walking in power. I'm walking in glory in this time because they are out of where they are out of that spiritual atmosphere that they need to be. So I'm walking in power now. This is my time. I must take charge. Hallelujah. So the weapon of a Christian is prayer. Hallelujah. The weapon of a Christian is prayer this morning. The weapon of a Christian is prayer. Let me just give you some example as we are about to call it quick and we are about to go because this message will just quick up and sum up. Take it as your science class today. Take it as maybe I haven't been in biology class for a long time and the woman of God decided to put me in biology today. So just take it like that. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, the righteous run into it and they are saved. May God bless you this morning. So it is because Daniel was in a spiritual atmosphere that his life was okay. The Bible said when the king decree, made some decrees, Daniel prayed three times a day. He kneeled down and he prayed according to the book of what? According to the book of what? According to the book of Daniel 6, 8 to 10. Hallelujah. The book of Daniel on um, chapter 6, verses 8 to 10. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and Job, according to the book of Job 1, verse 21, when, when, when he was suffering affliction, when, he, when, when everything that he had was going in one day time, his children was dead, his possession was, was affected, the Bible says Job went to God. And he knelt down. He said, I came to this world naked. Naked I came into this world, and naked will I return, Jesus. He said, naked I came, and naked will I return. So God, I gave you praise. So during his affliction, he was always praying. So you see the life of a believer. You always have to pray. You always have to be in that atmosphere of, of, of prayer, that spiritual atmosphere that covers you. No matter what, how difficult things get, put yourself always in that spiritual atmosphere. But if you're out of the atmosphere, dangers will come to you. Hallelujah. But even when dangers come to you out of the atmosphere, you can get back in that atmosphere by praying, getting on your knees and calling on Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then um, the Bible said again, according to the book of Luke 8, 43 to 48. Hallelujah. The woman with the issue of blood. Among the thousands, she was still in her atmosphere. Um, no matter how difficult her situation was, she had went from east to west around the world. She was still in the spiritual atmosphere of her life. She was always running to God. She was always in his presence. She never left his presence. She never forgot about him. She always hoped and believed that him. For day, even I heard that he's coming, I would touch his coming. And because I'm always in that atmosphere to protect me, against the witches and wizards of my family, against the witches and the weakness of this world, he will answer me. So in the spiritual atmosphere, there she was when God allowed, when God allows his virtue to leave him to enter her. She was in that spiritual atmosphere because she believed. She never left the atmosphere. She didn't allow her situation or her health problem to make her to leave the spiritual atmosphere. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And then we, we look at this woman in a book um in the book of Mark 7, verse 24 to 30 to, to the verse 30. This woman had a demon possessed daughter. Her daughter was possessed. I'm telling you, she was possessed with a demon. And, and, and she never left that atmosphere. Because maybe she wasn't a good mother. Maybe she wasn't the best wife. Maybe she wasn't the best woman. Maybe she wasn't even a single mother that had been struggling with her, her daughter. Maybe the husband has walked away. And she has been suffering. Or maybe the husband has died and she has been struggling. So she she saw that for some reason, something happened and her daughter happened to be demon possessed at this time. So she said, you know what? I have to be in the right atmosphere because if I am not in the right atmosphere, maybe I might even be possessed by that demon that had possessed my daughter. So the right atmosphere that this woman was in was what? They say that Jesus will protect her in the presence of Jesus. That is where she went. She said, Master, please deliver my daughter. Set her free. Cast her out. Hallelujah. Scriptures indicated that Jesus was kind of resisting a little bit and he didn't want to, you know, pay attention to the lady. But the lady exercised faith. Do you know why she exercised faith? She was exercising faith because she was in the atmosphere of God. She was in that spiritual atmosphere. She never got out. So as believers, no, more, no matter what you are going through, no matter what the situation is, no matter how difficult things may seem, no matter what, it is your, it is your piece of cake. It is a load you have to carry. It is a burden you have to carry. It is a load that you have on your head that God said, don't say, I do have to pray all the time. You have to pray because Jesus said it. That's it. It's not because Marilyn is telling you. You have to pray because God said you have to pray. That's it. It, that's your father. So if your father tells you something, you have to do it. Pray at all time. He said it. He said, pray at all time. He said it to you. Pray at all time. So there was this woman who had a demon possessed daughter. She didn't look for any fetish priest because she was in the atmosphere. She was in the spiritual atmosphere. 
She didn't look for any uh, uh, demon possessed or uh, uh, fetish person to go and try to put hands on her daughter. She 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 ran to God. She ran to Jesus because already she was in the spiritual atmosphere, praying in her spirit, praying in her mind, and talking to Jesus at all times. So she was in the spiritual atmosphere. She was. She believed in God. And, and Jesus saw her persistence and the, her, her, her act of faith, and he answered her prayer. So today, believers, I came to tell you, be mindful not to get out of your spiritual atmosphere because this is where God needs you to be as a believer. This is where God needs you to be as a child of God. You need to be in that spiritual atmosphere to be able to function well. You need to be in the spiritual atmosphere to be able to have a healthy life, to be able to fight the battles that are going to come at you. You need to be in the spiritual atmosphere because if you are out of the spiritual atmosphere, anything can happen to you because you have opened yourself to evil evaders. So you need to be in that spiritual atmosphere, which is very essential for the life of a believer, you and I. You don't have to be a man of God. You don't have to be a woman of God. You don't even have to, to be the, the bishop in the church. But as a, a human being, you need to be in the spiritual atmosphere at all times. Hallelujah. God has appointed each and every one of us angels to be with us. And the angels are with us. The Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we are accompanied by angels every day, but we need to be in the spiritual atmosphere to provoke God to make that person he assigned to us to move the way he's supposed to be moving. We, are you getting me? We have angels assigned to us and we need to believe it. As human beings, as believers in this world, God has given us angels attached to our life that we need to have, we need to have Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Thank you, my Lord and my God, for this revelation. Jesus said we are assigned spiritual being. We are assigned angels. And angels are assigned to us. But we, they said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So because the flesh is weak, Makadash, this morning, you need to offer supplication. You need to build a relationship with your God that will provoke him to be able to say, hey, I put you on assignment to protect my daughter. What are you doing? I sent you on assignment to protect my son. What are you doing? Get up and move. And that, that person will move. Because he, he is ever ready, she is ever ready inside of you. So you need to be in the spiritual atmosphere as a believer, always. The Bible said, in, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Jonah, okay? Jonah, according to the book of Jonah 2, Jonah was in disobedience. He saw that he did something that wasn't right. He was disobeying God. Many of us have disobeyed God in so many ways. Many of us have been so disrespectful to Jesus in so many ways. Believe it or not, this morning or this day, this night, whatever it is by your time, we have disrespected God on so many occasions. But it does not mean you should get out of the atmosphere of God. Just because you, you did something, it doesn't mean he will disown you. Your father gave birth to you. Your father birthed you. He cannot disown you. He, you are his DNA. He cannot disown you. He might discipline you, but he will not disown you. Hallelujah. So Jonah disobeyed God. Okay? He disobeyed God, and because he disobeyed Jesus, he was in the belly of the fish after he told the people to throw him in the water. Because he knew what God was doing. The kind of a punishment that God was carrying on in that boat. The people was uncomfortable. They thought they were about to lose their life. But he, he was in the belly of the fish. And he, he put himself in the atmosphere. He said, God, I'm sorry. In my distress, help me. He was in the atmosphere at all times, the spiritual atmosphere. Jesus. It is your name that I believe in above every presence at this hour. Jesus, take your place in my life. Jesus. Hallelujah. So then according to the scripture, according to the word of God, Jonah was in the belly of the fish and he began to call on Jesus. He was still in, he was still in that atmosphere that he know could protect him. He was still in that atmosphere that he know could protect him. 
Hallelujah. The Bible said in the book of Ephesians 6, 18, it said, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So be prayerful at all times. Be prayerful at all times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said according to the book of Job 121. And Job said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. He was going through afflictions, but he was still in his atmosphere. Hallelujah. He was still in his atmosphere. The Bible says, according to jo the Jonah verses, uh, chapter 2, hallelujah, it says, From the inside of the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord in heaven. He said, In my distress, I called to the Lord. And he answered me, From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for him. And you listened to my cry. You heard of me into the depths, into the very heart of the sea. And the currents, the currents swore around me, about me. All your waves break us, swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight. Yes, I looked again. Yet I look again toward your holy temple. Yet I look again toward your holy temple. So believers today, I say to you, according to the book of Luke 18, men are to always pray and not give up. So you need to always be where? In your spiritual atmosphere. It don't matter what the enemy plans to do. It don't matter the kind of trials and tribulations the enemy wants to throw at you. But I want to let you know, God commissioned me to tell you that you need to be healthy. That your health matters to him. Your health matters. Why did I talk about things that are essential to the human existence? I talked about food. If you don't eat food, you, your, your sugar will drop and you, you will not be performing at your 100%. Because you, you don't have your glucose, it's not acting right. Something has happened to your glucose, according to our research that we did here. Something has affected the, the thinking of your brain. So if you don't eat food, when someone does not eat first, their blood sugar drops, and they, they don't think right, they don't think straight. Study indicated that the brain intakes glucose to efficiently work. So you need to have food to work. So that, that means you need to be healthy. If you're hungry, you cannot function. If you're hungry, you cannot have a good mind of thinking. Hallelujah. You need to drink water. If you don't drink water, you will be dehydrated. You will have, you'll be dry. You'll be out of water. You'll be pale. You might, you might experience some belly pain. You might have, have some constipation. You have some health problems. Okay. And now if you don't have hygiene, Jesus, if you don't have hygiene, I say to you, if you don't have good hygiene, you will suffer. How can you suffer when you don't have good hygiene? You have your mouth is thin, you won't have good friends. If you don't brush your teeth, your friends, when you're talking, you have mouth odor, they don't want to battle with you. If you don't brush your teeth, also you have some teeth problem. You have some uh, 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 some kind of a uh, uh, mouth. Uh, they, they have something called ginger, uh, gingivitis, I think. And, and you, you, you will have that in your mouth. Your nose also, if it's not taken care of, it will be affected. Your ears, if so much blood is then it's not clean, you tip, you might be affected. You have ear problem, water dropping out of your ears. If you don't clean under your arm, you might have some sting arm pain and people might not want to be around you because when you lift up your arm, they see that there is some sin that is coming from there. They won't want to be around you. If you don't take proper shower, if you sit around your friends, you might be having some body odor. You are not healthy. If you don't wear clean clothes, your friends might smell that your clothes are dirty. You are not, you are not healthy physically. You are unhealthy. You don't practice good hygiene. So that is the same thing of the life of the believer. You need to practice healthy spiritual hygiene. And what is your healthy spiritual hygiene? Your healthy spiritual hygiene is that spiritual atmosphere that you need to be in. The spiritual atmosphere of praying, according to the book of Thessalonians, praying without ceasing. Because if you pray and you cease, the devil can get an opportunity the time you cease to enter. If you pray and you cease, that, 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 that car accident you didn't pray for will just come or show up and you get in an accident and something happened and, and your life will just be delayed, set back. If you don't pray, that, that, that you experience some things in your life that you yourself cannot be able to comprehend. If you don't pray. 
and explain to you the woman who, who her daughter was, was possessed with demon. She was probably out working and she was probably so busy, maybe because the father not in the picture. She's a single mother. Or maybe because, like I said, the husband had died and she had been struggling. She'd been working trying to put food on the table for her and her daughter. So because she wasn't praying, she was focused on idolizing other things and not God at the time and not idolizing his atmosphere. Her daughter got possessed by the demon. And because her daughter was possessed by the demon, she came to herself and said, woman, what are you doing? You need to come back to yourself and do something. And she went back to her atmosphere and said, I need to be in the atmosphere of God. So people today are the son of my voice. Women are the son of my voice. You need to be in a spiritual atmosphere for your home. You need to be in a spiritual atmosphere to fight the battles that the enemy will throw in your home. You need to be in a spiritual atmosphere to fight the battles that the enemy will throw in your home. You, you need to be in a spiritual atmosphere to fight the battle that the enemy will throw at your children. You need to be in a spiritual atmosphere to fight the battles that the enemies will throw at your husband. At your husband, because why they see them as the weaker vessel. You need to be in spiritual atmosphere so that what you can be able to stand firm when the enemy uses your friend or your best friend, your close person, the window to get to you. Hallelujah! It is essential for you to be healthy spiritually. And this this morning, it is why I came to tell you. This is what I came to announce to you. This is the message that God told me to tell you today. What kind of atmosphere are you in? What kind of atmosphere are you in? Is the atmosphere you're in allowing you to breathe good? Is the atmosphere you're in allowing you to breathe well? Is the atmosphere you're in allowing you to be able to, to have good friends, good relationship, or, or good re results of the things you want? What kind of an atmosphere are you in today? If you're in the wrong atmosphere that is making you to club all the time, that is making you to, to gossip, to steal, to do all sort of things that you're not supposed to be doing, and it's causing set back in your life, and it's taking you back to the street where God don't want you to be, I came to tell you this morning, I came to tell you at this hour, I came to tell you at this night, this, this day, God said that you need to be in the right atmosphere to win your battles. The woman with the issue of blood, she was in the right atmosphere. That is why she was able to sum up courage amongst millions, amongst thousands, to touch the garments of God. Hallelujah. They, 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 they said Jonah was in the right atmosphere. That is why when he was in the belly of the fish, his mind did not run to finding a way to, to push the, the fish or to open the mouth of the fish to get out. But he, he put himself back in that atmosphere. He, Pouring himself in the atmosphere to glorify God. What kind of atmosphere are you in? What kind of atmosphere are you in? Are you in an atmosphere that will add to you or subtract from you? Today, I just came to tell you as we, I'm about to go, God bless you. God bless you. I love you with the love of God. Remember these scriptures that we talk about tonight? The key scriptures that God gave this message to you is to pray without season. According to the book of Thessalonians, 517. Pray without ceasing. This is the key scripture for you tonight. Hallelujah. Your spiritual atmosphere is your prayer, your prayer life. Your prayer life. Hallelujah. The Bible said, according to the book of Luke 18, verse 1, men are to always pray and not give up. Jesus. The Bible said, according to the book of Daniel 6, chapter 6, 8 to verse 10 that Daniel was praying three times every day. He was in the atmosphere, okay? The Bible says, and Job was in the atmosphere. No matter his afflictions, he was in the atmosphere of God. Hallelujah. The woman with the issue of blood we just talked about, according to the book of Luke 8, 43 to 48, she was in the atmosphere. She put herself to be battle ready because enough was enough, and she said, my God must do something. Hallelujah. The woman with a, with a possessed daughter, according to the book of Mark 7, 24, she was in the atmosphere. She was in the right atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere. Hallelujah. And Jonah was in the right atmosphere. May you be in the right atmosphere from today. As you listen to this message, may you get in the right atmosphere. Okay? May you get in the right atmosphere. Because you need to be in the right atmosphere. If you're not in the right atmosphere, it will affect your spiritual health. And you will not be healthy spiritually. 
probably you could be healthy physically about all these things we talked about, but spiritually, you might not be healthy. Hallelujah. Spiritually, you might not be healthy. So please, the God that we serve this morning, Jehovah Elohim, he's telling me to let you know today, you need to be in the right atmosphere to give him the glory. May God bless you. Share this video. Empower yourself. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. I'm here to empower you. Empower yourself. Don't lose hope. A praying man win battles. A praying woman win battles. A praying daughter win battles. A praying son win battles. No matter how tough they are. So be encouraged. May God bless you. And I love you so much. Again, woman of God, Minister Marilyn Doe. God bless you. Share this video and let somebody be blessed. Thank you. And I love you with the love of God.